Hello and welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV. I'm Paul Cazera and today you join me on the awesome River Air. And today we're trying to catch Dason Roach, cracking fish just like this on the hemp, tear and elderberry. Well today I've picked this peg on the air simply because after this long hot summer we've had we're on the edge of an outfall that comes from the canal. When you get a bit of extra water in like we've had last night with a bit of rain the canal fills and this outflow starts to flow. And in my opinion all the fish are going to congregate around here and uh, I've been proved right so far. we lovely fish just like that and uh, I've got them lined up now and it's pretty much one a bung. We're uh, just on the outskirts of Leeds on the river air. Um, it's a venue that I fished on an earlier video when we were uh, just showcasing this 16 number, 16 foot number one match rod. And we did say we'd come back and catch a few fish when the time was right. And today is that time. It's early September. The time is just right for fishing seed baits. We've got berries starting to fall off the tree and it's a perfect time for catching roach especially. Using the tares and the elderberries. Elderberries is something I use quite often really this time of year. And it's effective on the dace, on the roach and the chub. And hopefully today's session, as it progresses, will show you just how effective that can be. Right, we started the session of feeding two lines. We've got what we call in front of us here, oh, Mr. Bike there, what we call in front of us here, a bit of a dub, where uh, the flow from that outfall just causes it to back eddy a bit. So I've fed, fed uh, two lines, one in the dub and one on the edge of the crease and I expect to catch most of my fish on the crease but uh, there is a chance of catching a bigger fish in the bottom of that dub that's down there and here we go, we're in I 
I've got two floats set up on two different rods. The one I'm using at the moment is a 16 foot CR10 number one match rod. One of my favourite rods for this particular uh, discipline. Attached to that I've got a six number eight shouldered stick lightly shotted down shirt button style with number eight and that gives me a nice slow nice slow fall matching the bait the loose feed going through the water right the other rod that I've got set up is a 14 foot CR10 number one as well and that's uh, rigged up with an Oliver attached underneath one of the old Topper Haskins type floats, crow quill with a little cork body on. Very sensitive and uh, that's pretty much for fishing in that dub just so I can hold my bait still. Down at the bottom where hopefully those bigger fish are hanging out. This method that we're using today, um, pretty much like all float fishing, is very, very busy. We've got to keep feeding the hemp, every put in. Uh, in my hemp I've got a few tears, a few elderberries mixed in, just so that the fish get a taster for my hook bait. And uh, it's getting pretty hectic now with the bites. So, it's, so it is a really, really busy method. As you can see, the cast out, just settle the rod on my rest while that's going through the water. Pouch of hemp over the top, and the fish are pretty much right under that hemp now. We're an hour into the session, and they are really lined up now. We're just waiting for the better stamp fish to come. And that's the kind of roach we're looking for. Perfect, beautiful, plump fish. And that's pretty much what I'm firing out. Uh, good full pouches at the moment. As you can see in there, there's hemp, there's a few tears, and uh, the odd elderberry. Right, as far as feeding's concerned, I'm casting out. The pouch of feed's going in just in front of the float. So if you can imagine my bait's falling down, the bait, the hook bait, is now in among the feed. That's the reason why we catapult just in front of that float. The hook bait is falling slowly through the water at an angle as I'm holding slightly back, giving me perfect presentation every time. As for casting out, to get me with the presentation, the instant presentation that I'm after, I'm doing a side cast. Holding the bottom shot, which is six inches above my hook, and that is my hook length, is six inch. Slight bend in the rod, like so. So we've got a bit of pressure, it helps spring it out. And then just sweep the rod out, trap the line, and that lands everything in a straight line. We get the pouch full of hemp just in front of that float. So if you can imagine that hook bait now sinking through 
right where that feed is. And we haven't got to bite that trot, that only means one thing. My hook bait's come off. <laughs> Let me show you how, how I hook the tear. The tear's got an oval shape to it. I put the hook point just in the edge and using a barbless hook, I always use a barbless hook on, on the tear, just nick it through. So I've got the hook exposed, so I've got no problem with missing bites. Occasionally you'll cast out and the tail will come off, but don't worry about that, it's worth it. So you get that hook just nicking that tear. It usually does stay on. And uh, we'll describe later how, how we cook the tears and what have you to get them just like that. Out we go again. can't be this super fishing. This perfectly up bottom lip. Barbless up, comes out easy. Everyone's a winner. Perfect. Right, we've got a bit of a downstream wind today and it is important when roach fishing especially keep that line behind the float. As you can see I'm holding back slightly. This long rod comes into play because it's holding the line off the water just lovely for me here because obviously the inside has got this dub and I don't want it swirling round all over. You seem perfectly at the moment the advantages of this 16 foot rod. It's very light for a start off. It's great for when you want to control the float out at a little bit of a distance like we're fishing today. And as you can see we're there, we're in contact all the time with the fish and I've got a nice one on here. I'm going to net this one, we don't want this falling off. And this is really what we've come for. We're just starting to get a bit better fish now. And there you go, a prime example of the plump roach you can catch on a tear. Today we've got a 14 barbless hook on and it's perfect for these tears. Once the roach get tuned in to these seed baits they're not bothered about a hook, all they see is that seed. So you don't have to worry about using small hooks when the tear's concerned. Perfectly hooked. Well, we're at 
two, two and a half hours into the session now. Um, pretty much got them lined up, but they're coming in dribs and drabs. I've had bursts of fish and then uh, some iffy bites on the tear and then another burst of fish so I'm now chained to the elderberry and that seems to be getting me more positive bites and I'm picking some nice fish as well. We've had some decent stamp fish and anybody who likes a roach would love this session that I'm having today. And here comes another one. That's this one's on the elderberry, a smaller one. But a fish is a fish, they all count. Right, the elderberry we hook different to the tear because these are really soft. So these you can hook right through the centre, nice and gentle. You don't want to split them. And just leave the point out like that. And with them being soft, you'll strike that hook straight through. And as you can see, that 14 hook just holds that elder very nice. Any smaller and you'd probably pull out of those. Right, so let's cast out and see if we can get one. Yeah, it's going really well, um, but as the session is going on, we're finding we are missing a few bites, but you really shouldn't get frustrated by that. It's just one of the hazards of fishing with the seed bait. You get it with hemp on the hook. You also get it with the elderberry and with the tear. They're just coming in and striking that bait so quickly. There we go, we've got one. And what we've got to try and do is wait for the float to bury properly. You get little knocks and taps, but when it buries, that's the result. And that's a dace. Just shows you that they're like the elderberry too. What I'm doing now, uh, feed-wise, is instead of feeding like the textbook, if you would like, of uh, every cast or even twice a cast, little and often, I'm tending now to put a big pouch full in every other cast. And, uh, and at the moment, that seems to be paying benefits where I'm getting much more positive bites. And I believe that uh, that is because the fish are following that big load of hemp down. So they're down on the deck feeding on that while my float gets cast in and my hook bait drops over the top. So they'll come up and intercept that and I'm getting much more positive bites by doing that. So that's uh, 
One way that I've found today in this session to cut out those little taps and knocks all the time that you get with a little off and feed basis. I've now fed probably two and a half pints of hemp and uh, in among that, there's a nice day there, look. And in among that, I also uh, mix my elderberry and tear. So I've probably done a quarter of a pint easily of the elder of uh, the tear, and probably half a pint of elderberry. Elderberry, you won't overfeed the fish with the elderberries if you're feeding them, because it's mainly just a juice. But obviously the tear, there's much more food content in that, so you don't want to be feeding too much. But uh, there's that many fish in this swim now, I could probably feed a gallon of them today. So uh, we've come on a good day today, that's for sure. Right, tears. The way I look after my tears and cook them is uh, buy the seed obviously from your pet shop or your tackle shop will sell them and the good old trusty flask. I've been told off that many times by uh, using the kitchen pans and the gas cooker and the smells from the hemp and everything that I invested in a good old stainless steel flask, a big one. Takes plenty. So I can get three pints of hemp in this and also my tears. And I don't like to darken my tears off. I like them just in the natural state. Uh, I'll get I seem to catch better on them. So uh, straight out the flask. And they've been in, well at the time of this filming, they've, they've been in a day and a half. And they're just absolutely perfect for me. Nice and soft, ready for the hook. And as I say, you can get three pints in there, so put them in dry, boiling water, and fill up. And one thing you must do, I must, I'll put them in there now. I must point this out, because I had a bit of an accident myself, which yet again I got into trouble from <laughs> her indoors, as you know. That's Pauline, hello Pauline. You notice your flask doesn't come like that, it usually has a big plastic top on. Well, these were cooking in the kitchen one night and we heard this big loud bang. You know what's coming next, don't you? I'd overfilled the flask in my haste to get plenty of hemp done, it was that night. And as the hemp's expanded, it's put that much pressure on the top, it's blown it off. Top's flown off, straight into my kitchen ceiling and believe it or not, it actually put a hole in the ceiling. Luckily I'm in the trade so I could uh, put that right. Pauline came down, hemp seed all over the kitchen. It's got to be one of the funniest things that I've, uh, I've done for a while fishing wise. Uh, we didn't see it like that at the time. Well, I did, but Pauline didn't. So uh, that's how I do my, uh, my hemp and my tears, as you can see. Same thing with the hemp. Three pints you'll get in there, and that's enough really for most sessions. If I'm going to one of my famous chub sessions, then I'll do six pints, two sessions with it. So that's that out the way. Picked these last night on my way home from work. I've mentioned that before, how we do that. Find your elderberry bush, they're all, they're all in the back lanes, country lanes. And I'll leave mine on the stalks like that. And it's just a case then of Just rub them off like that. They're perfect. These you can feed if you're patient enough to go and collect. I mean, I collected, I collected what's in that bucket there in five minutes tops. I had to do before the police moved me along anyway. <laughs> so we just pull them off like that. I like to keep them on the stalk, it, 
it seems to keep them a bit fresher for me. Right, that's how we do that. If you these elderberries can be frozen and the, and they will keep right through the winter frozen. If you want to freeze them, what I tend to do, keep them on the stalk like that. Just laying them flat. Look at that. That's that's how you'll see them on the tree. When you drive it, when you're driving down the down the road, you'll see them just hanging like that off the tree. That's how you recognise your elderberries. So what I, do, what I tend to do to freeze them, put them in small freezer bags. Maybe you, you can maybe do a few more than that. Put them in your freezer, nice and flat like that. Just stack them on top of each other. They'll keep keep forever. Them. I've used I've used them, you know, a, a year old. Obviously, once the season comes round again, you can pick fresh ones. But uh, if you haven't got time, just send wife out on the bike. She'll get them for you. Right, we're taking a break from the fishing, just to give them a rest, and I'll uh, take you through a couple of rigs I'm using today. First of all, the main rig that I've been catching on today is, uh, as you've seen, my 16 foot uh, match number one, CR10. And it's set up very similar to maggot rigs, really, and caster rigs, there's not a lot of difference. We've got a hook length, 6 inch hook length with an 014 mustard long point barbless hook on and I always like to use barbless hooks with my seed fishing simply because it's easier to get the, uh, to get the, the elderberry and the uh, tear on the hook as you'll have seen from footage shown in the video. From the six inch hook length, I've got a string of number 10 shot. There's four number 10 shot there, and this is just to get a real nice slow fall through the water. Following that, we've got just a pretty standard shirt button style stick float rig for fishing the slower, mover, slower moving waters, and it's uh, Number eight, all shirt button style as you can see. Pretty equal distance between them all, going right up to the float, which in this case today is set at about seven foot deep, so that's what we're fishing water, uh, to a shouldered wire stem stick, a DH6 number four, really good floats. And, and that's it, pretty simple basically. That rig is for catching through the layers of the water, on the drop if you like, and that's how we've been getting most of our fish today. And the other rig, which is set up today purely to fish in this uh, boily water we've got from this outfall, and this is set up, same hook length again, same principle behind the hook, barbless hook, 14 again. We've got a couple of number 10, or three number 10 droppers to a bulk and an olivet. And the, the reasoning behind the bulk is if I want to slide the olivet up and then slow the fall down in the lower region of the, uh, of the peg, then I can do that just by sliding that up and part in the shot. And on this rig is a float that a lot of the older anglers 
you may recognise. The good old Topper Haskins came up with those. Really sensitive for what they are. It's a crow quill uh, with a little bit of balsa or cork. It's balsa in this case. And uh, quite slim, so it'll strike through the water. And that's basically our, our setup. Nothing special. You'll have seen the same setups for caster fishing, maggot fishing, whatever you like. Never saw the bite, I was just thinking, I can't believe I've had a trot through and not had a bite. That must have just been swimming along with it in its mouth. And it is a proper fish. Another nice plump roach, and I'm going to net this one to make sure we've got it. What a fantastic fish to end this session. Another perfect roach on the seed. Well, what a fantastic net of fish. There must be close on 20 pound there. Shows the effectiveness of the seed baits. Hemp, tears, and of course the elderberry that we've used today. Thanks for watching.